Those goods on the dealer is bank too fruity. You're at a service station and he's got he's playing he's playing two fruit machines. Presumably when he stocked a petrol with like 250 quid cash sat on them. Like he was he was a skill to admire playing the two. Like the focus it demanded, and I'm guessing he'd been there for quite some time. Spashing out fruit is what sad or that. I mean Burger King Burger King would be far better off. Can you pixelate out the cost of copy? Yeah, no, we'd like to ask if we ask ones not paid us in it. Where are we going? Beric upon tweet to do what? And plate gothic. And we're going to be staying at the cookie jar. Owlwick. Panic. Owlwick. Owlwick and panic. Hello. Sarah had to have a bite. Gosset Golf Club. No apologies. No. Deep on the coast of Northumberland. Tell me about it. It's about 30 miles north of Newcastle. It's about six miles south of Berwick upon Tweed. It was founded in 1890. Sick! Now don't forget we stayed in the cookie jar. The cookie jar. There's actually a hotel called the cookie jar. Sick. It's a mix of uh, Willie Park Jr., James Braid, and more recently, Frank Penning. Mackenzie and Ebert are doing some work there in terms of a long-term plan. Don't do it. Don't jump. Willie Park Jr. built the initial 18 holes that sit there. And James Braid came in around 1930 to lengthen the course. I mean, it's quite a journey getting there, but a fairly rewarding one when you get there. Tell me about Tell me about the, the journey and what you find when you get there. So you pull in off this A road that seems to go from south to north all the way up the coastline. It does not look like the way. And then you take this, this looks like back side. country road which winds its way through farmland and then eventually you cross the railway line and all of a sudden all of the dunes just reveal themselves. You've got this huge expanse of golfing terrain that you haven't really seen so far in the car but it feels like you're in a really remote part of the world you're not there's nothing around in terms of like a big town there's nothing there apart from just a small clubhouse a car park and then this this stretch of Duneland that sort of goes right up and down the coastline tell me a little bit about the course the routing and maybe start with that wonderful first hole so the clubhouse sits almost in the middle of the golf course. And you've got the front nine, which stretches out to the north, I believe, and kind of loops its way around in a clockwise direction. And then you get back to the clubhouse where you then play the back nine, stretching out to the south, again in a clockwise direction. So it's, it's sort of like a, an out and back links if you put the clubhouse at either end of the land but because it's situated in the middle you play these two loops of nine that go off in either way i'd say the higher profile ground the more dramatic duneland sits on the back nine the the sort of more subtle stuff is definitely on the front nine um the front nine seems to ask i think more questions of your golf in terms of shot shaping dog legs movement within the holes off the tee Whereas the back nine, it's more a case of trying to straddle the land and kind of play over dunes and some of the you know, more, more obstacles on the ground. I think it's fair to say there's quite a lot of land there that they can't use that is quite good. I mean, there's just acres, absolutely acres of unbelievable triple SI ground. Like, you cannot put a golf course there. But if you could, there would be room for a dozen golf courses in some of the most unbelievable dune land that you can see. And it takes you out to there on like maybe the second tee where you look behind and you can see this sort of huge expanse of land that's there. But it's nice because you've got this whole framing of everything around you. You haven't got, you haven't got a town, you haven't got loads of people. There's a beach down there, but it's all quite... It feels like it's nicely removed from anything else that's around you. 
I mean, the first is an interesting one. It's got one of the most incredible elevated green sites that sits above the fairway section. You drive off to the to the left of an internal out of bounds, which is quite quite rare. But it's such a lovely little touch because you've got 18 coming down the other side of that, and you drive out to the left, and you've got this elevated green that kind of looks like an infinity green. And we played it so early in the morning that you just see these silhouettes up on top of a hill and a flag flapping away in the distance that you got a hit to. And you play up, and if you're anything short of that hole, you know you're just gonna have the ball drift back down to you. It's a bit of a baptism of fire for a first hole, playing up to that elevated green, and then moving off into a quite a tricky second hole, which I think gives you a flavor of the course and what's about to unfold. Two's a great par three. Right over that crater, massive carry we're well, not a not a massive hole but a huge drop big carry great green again five brilliant par four long dog leg left really awkward line into the green where you have to play towards that little hut that's out there in the distance and you almost you know really rewards the longer drive there because otherwise you have to play across the green at sort of an oblique angle almost and don't forget seven. Seven's that great par four that's kind of flanked by that dune up on your right, pretty much the whole way down. It's a straight hole, but nonetheless, really intimidating to kind of make sure that you want to be coming in from the right and the dunes up there, and you need to, you know, all the fairway all cambers right to left, and you want to be on the right side of the fairway, and and it feels like it's being carved into the into the dune line because off to the you've got the bank up to the right, and then the drop off to the left, and it's. It's a, a wonderful green site that you've got to make sure that you play well if you're going to score well. What I, what I would say about the course is the real party piece comes in the middle of the back nine. So 12, 13, 14, 15, they're the absolute knockout holes at Gozik. 12. Short par four. Kind of makes you think it's drivable for the bigger hitter. It's absolutely not the play. But there's this huge dune that sits in front of the green. You have to play sort of bit across the ditch, which is not really in play, but you're sort of playing an angle up to the fairway. And actually, when you look back from the green, you need to be on the right side. You need to take the aggressive line with an iron towards the center right of the fairway to open up a view of the green. The, the sort of really conservative play is to pull it well left but then you're left with a blind shot into a green really cool golf hole awesome then you've got 13 long par 3 you know it's like it, it's an obvious golf hole the, the tee sits up on the dune green down below but the green sort of moves away from you front to back so holding that green it, when we played it felt really difficult you need to kind of pitch that on the front edge, distance is everything, you know, really, really good par three. And then you've got 14 and 15 where you play back into this kind of really big dune land. 14th greens, this huge sort of, there's this huge bank half pipe on the right where you can really run the ball in and off it quite easily. Stunning green, great par four, you sort of play sort of out and slight dog leg right and a little uphill for the, for the second shot. And then the 15th's got to be one of the one of the great par three greens in golf, I would say. I mean, it's this unbelievable bowl. It is the punch bowl. It, it is the it is the punch bowl green. I mean, you, it, it's so extreme. Anything in the right sort of area, chip, or even if you're chipping short or from right or left, you can take it right up the bank the other side. Watch it run back down. Such a fun golf hole. Absolutely extraordinary. And I think the 18th needs a mention. Special mention for 18th. 18th again, a sort of shortish par four, but there are just bunkers everywhere. It sort of looks like a, it looks like a great short par three that's been on growth hormones. It's like longer, much like it's playing as like a distance hole, but it, to the eye, it looks like almost like you've got this par three green that's just really big. Yeah, you almost certainly got to play an iron up short, but it's just stunning. You play back towards the clubhouse, beautiful revetted bunkering, great golf hole. What were your thoughts on Gozik? Gozik for me is a course 
that struggles to get the recognition it deserves because of where it is. The northeast of England is an area of England that doesn't have much golf coverage because it's not got an abundance of golf courses on that coastline. Now that doesn't take away from how good these golf courses are, but what it does do is detract people from making the trip. It is 100% worth the trip to go and play Gosick. It's a fabulous golf course. It's, it's a great, honest English links. Unbelievable value. One of the most tranquil settings you can play golf. So close to Scotland, like really close to East Lothian. Unbelievable. Great time there. <laughs>